guys, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Captain, and today I'm going to be doing a garage review of the SU-85. And before anyone asks, I'm on the test server because the lighting and everything looks better in the standard garage than it does in the Memorial Day garage, which is currently on the live server, so that's why I'm here. Anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I quite like this tank. Uh, when you come from the SU-85B to this, it feels very similar. Um, the maneuverability is there, the agility to move around the map is there, the gun is fantastic. Uh, both guns are actually fantastic that I use on this tank. The armor is kind of, nah, it's not really there and your hit points aren't really there, but um, you definitely have the firepower and the maneuverability to make this tank effective in the game. So. What we'll do is we'll start out with the hit points. You got 350, uh, not so high. Um, the the other uh, tank destroyer I just got, the SU-85I, actually has 30 more hit points than this. Has 380, but um, weight is fairly hefty at about 30 tons with a 500 horsepower engine. You have the choice of two different engines. Uh, the second one giving you only about 20 more horsepower, so maybe not the the best investment uh, right off the bat. Um, it probably only gives you a little bit better acceleration and stuff, but uh, you can hit 55. The The tank moves around quite well around the battlefield, so that's always nice. So the 55 uh, upper speed limit like pretty much makes the tank able to relocate and change its position and get better angles on whoever you're shooting at. 35 traverse, not really that great, but the treads are pretty wide, so I find it actually turns quite well. Uh, I think the ground resistance for the S35 is quite good. The armor is basically T34 um, hull underneath with uh, a slightly different upper casemate chassis thing here. So you got 45 in the front, which is heavily sloped, so effectively you probably have around 90. Um, most stuff shooting at you, I've found, unless you're heavily angling, um, and you take a shot like off here or the gun mat lit, most stuff is going to go through here, and this is where most people shoot. Um, you can also shoot down here. Um, I find in shooting anywhere in here usually results in damage to the tank, uh, when I'm shooting at one anyway. So any uh, shot from the side will typically go in. There's not a heck of a lot of sloping on the sides, and you still only have 45. Rear armor again, you have 40. So that's it's not bad, but it's not great either. Um, I wouldn't count on bouncing too many shots in the SU-85. Don't really rely on its armor, even angling. Um, the only shots you're really going to bounce very much are off the pretty hefty gun matlet, which you can see does have quite a lot of uh, armor to it. So we'll take a look at the view range. View range is one of the areas where this tank does suffer quite heavily because it's a close top tank and it doesn't have any prominent hatches to see out of very well. The view range is 280, so I pretty much think that binocular telescopes are mandatory for this tank to see and spot for yourself when you need to. And also I take Camonet to try and keep myself a little bit more invisible and just vents to make everything 5% better for all my crew skills and moving around and everything. Uh, signal range is 525. Uh, it goes up quite heavily from 325 in the stock radio, so 525 is not bad. But it's not great. You got a typical German kind of half-ass radio. The last thing we'll look at are the choices in guns. And they're actually, they're kind of our two choices. Um, I'll just get these up here, up and out of the way. So you've basically got this gun here the 85 millimeter D5S, which has a rate of fire of 13.33, which equates to right around 4.5-ish seconds to reload. You got 120 pen, 160 damage, 0.43 accuracy, which isn't great, and 2.3 aim time. Um, what I have found with this one is it shoots so bloody fast, like when you have the, the vents at 100% crew, that uh, you get to shoot even actually more around four seconds, which is pretty fast, and you can put the damage out a fair bit quicker even than than this gun because you have just the the rate of fire and the DPM it puts out. So I wouldn't necessarily write off this gun, the regular eighty five, 
I've had ha I've had fourteen hundred damage games in it, so it is it is quite potent. Um, your other gun that you can choose from is the other eighty five, and that's the D five S eighty five BM. It's a bit of a mouthful. So you've got a rate of fire of ten, which gives you around five point five between shots as far as the seconds go. You got one forty five pen with normal AP rounds, almost two hundred with APCR and forty fourth HE. You do have about a twenty or a twenty hit point bump on the regular 85, doing about 180 damage per shot, and at 300 with HE. One thing where this gun is a heck of a lot better is in its accuracy. It is 0.34. I don't particularly know why it's a whole heck of a lot more accurate than uh, the regular the other 85, but it is. So. I find the gun's pretty accurate. You let it aim in uh, with an averageish aim time of 2.3. Uh, it, it will usually hit what you shoot at. Uh, the pen is not amazing, amazing, but it um, the extra damage this puts out compared to like a Yeg Panzer IV, uh, it's quite nice to do an extra 30 or 40 damage sometimes. So all in all. Um, I probably do recommend the, the, the top is top gun just because I like the accuracy and it's got a little bit better pen. But if you're going to get up closer to people and try and smash people a little closer uh, and not have to worry about the accuracy quite as much, this gun actually is quite good as well just because of how fast it shoots. So it's got two fantastic guns. Uh, I like both of them. I recommend either one, but uh, the top one's probably the best choice for most people depending on how you play my crew i took camouflage on all my dudes i'll switch this over to six cents when i get it to 100 percent the one achilles heel of this tank is it doesn't hold a heck of a lot of ammo you can see here it only holds like upper 30s of amount of ammunition so that's a, it holds it back a little bit uh, as far as you taking speculative shots and blind shots and stuff. Uh, I take regular stuff for the, the repair kit and the first aid kit and the fire extinguisher. And there's not a heck of a lot else to talk about in the garage. The other tier 5 tank destroyers that this thing's going to be going to be up against are the Stug, which has comparably crappy armor. Its gun is just about as accurate. Uh, it does aim a heck of a lot quicker, but it doesn't do as much damage, uh, although it shoots a little bit quicker. So that's one of the, the main tanks that we'll be going up against as far as tank destroyer-wise. If you look at the Americans, you got tier 5 tank destroyers. You've got the T-49, which is quite overpowered because it's mainly, mainly because it's invisible. And um, it's just his camo rating is too high. And you've got the Wolverine, which is more heavily armored uh, with a pretty decent gun. Uh, this thing actually has some pretty odd angles in its armor and bounces shots from 150 pen from angles that it should go in. So it's uh, it's not a bad tank. Um, tier 5 tanks from the British. You've got the AT2, very heavily armored tank. So those are the sorts of things that uh, you'll probably be going up against on the other side when you're top tier. This thing does get regular matchmaking. You get f anywhere from tier 3 matches to where you're top tier or tier five matches where you're bottom tier and you don't have to go up against tier sevens. So the, I find the gun is more than adequate to shoot at uh, most tier seven tanks and do a decent amount of damage. Uh, if you run into an IS or a Tiger, you can probably penetrate it quite easily from the side, from the front. You might want to switch to APCR depending on where you're shooting at it and how angled he is. But um, all in all, the, the gun is adequate to keep you in the battle against any tier 6 or tier 7 tank. As long as you stay hidden and you let other tanks spot for you sometimes. Uh, you can't spot for yourself with your, your binos, but you probably want to rely on your team to do some spotting. If you have a good scout on your team, that always helps you. So we'll jump into some of the battles I had, and you can see this tank in action. Alright, this is the first match I'm going to show. Oh, this is a match I had on Corellia. And it's a tier 6 game, not heavily tier 6, but there's enough tier 6s in there to make it a tier 6 game. They've got uh, Churchill 7, uh, VK36, and a VKP, and a Dicker Max. And their artillery is also tier 6, and a, he's a Hummel. So I've got myself into a position where I can try and support some of these guys, but none of them have pushed forward enough other than our T34 
to get any spots. They're playing really defensively, and this is just bad play. You really want to try and get to the corner and try and take the hill. If you don't do that, you usually suffer pretty bad. And I actually managed to bounce on the Chinu Kai, which usually never happens. But I got spotted, so I needed to get into cover behind this rock. I don't really have much cover here, but I ended up taking a pretty big hit from the, the VK-36 from his short 88. So, even though I was fairly heavily uh, angled there, it still went in and did a lot of damage to me. I'm not even sure where I got hit. Oh, it looks like I got hit right, right there, right beside the gun matlet. So, being how these guys were playing in this part of the, the map down here... I decided to evac because I couldn't take another shot and I obviously couldn't keep my tank covered up enough to keep it alive. So I decided to relocate and support the other flank. So moving around, um, you can see that when you play the SU-85B compared to this, uh, the gun elevation and gun depression are a lot better. Um, you don't suffer from the same problems that uh, the SU-85B does where you kind of have to rock the tank forward and back to try and get the gun up and down. It, it doesn't have very good gun depression as far as that stuff goes. And it does have a pretty decent arc. Uh, you can see that I've got the gun canted all the way to the left. The, the arc that this tank can shoot at is quite good. And it gets around not too bad. See I'm doing about 40, 42 right there, 45. And you can get up to 55. So there is a tier 6 tank that looks like he's coming around the corner. So I'm going to get up on top of the hill. But first I want to shoot the Dicker Max because he's part of the Jaguar clan. And I always target J players first. Mostly because I found that uh, because there's another guy that has Captain Canada, I guess. On uh, in that clan, and he freaks every time we get in the same battle, or I get into a battle with another guy with, from the J clan. So I always target them first and try and kill them as fast as I can, simply to piss them off. So I know that Dicker Max is somewhere over there, so I'm just gonna pre-aim his position. We really get some pretty good shots into the uh, the Churchill. Oh, and there's the Dicker Max. Too bad he's behind a rock. I really want to kill him. Looks like he's taking some fire and he's backing out of that position. Get a pretty nice shot. Too bad it was a low roll. And I don't think that one went in. Oh, maybe it did. But that one went in. So good. J Clan guy down. Makes me happy. Die, Jaguars. Die. Jaguars. So now I'm pretty much outrunning um, the tanks that I'm supporting. I don't really have too much to shoot at, so not really too much point in hanging out here for too much longer. And I did manage to track myself going down the hill, so we'll just speed this up. As you can see, going over the, the ground here, I'm doing about 30, but this is fairly heavily sloped uphill. The game is looking pretty good in our favor. We're up 10 to 6. Only got one kill so far. But we got an SU-100 and a Churchill-1 coming down this way. And there's not too much that's too scary on the other team. There is a tier 5 alternative uh, TD from the Germans. You can do about 240 damage. I don't know why I shot there. I accidentally clicked my mouse. <laughs> so our Churchill was afraid to move forward, um, so I kind of decided to scout it out myself. Tog did a really good job in this game. He ended up doing around the same damage I did. And there's an AT2 there, and we spot a T28, and I just want to get into cover because I know I'm spotted at this point. And he gets taken out by the SU-100. And I spot the Hummel. Two shots into that dude. Now he's dead. 
And we spot the death toaster. <laughs> oh no. And I pretty much thought I'd be dead at this point, so I just decided to get the hell out of the way. And it turned out to be not a, too bad of a decision. And can't get the gun down. Tilting over the edge, and I thought I was dead again, and he missed again. And then, uh... <laughs> Our artillery, Anorexic Panda, he managed to take him out. I would have got the kill on him, but uh, it, uh, it was close, and I, I managed not to die, so I was pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> and uh, the gun even just snapshotting it there, not really aiming, and it ended up uh, being pretty accurate because I was really, really, really close. So that game was all right. That was a first-class mastery badge, and it doing about 1,400, 1,500 damage and managed to stay alive even with 75 hit points after taking that shot at the beginning of the game and hurting myself going down this slope but i didn't die and managed to take out a couple tanks so i'm feeling good All right, this is a game on Lakeville. I had I had this game yesterday, actually. Ended up turning out pretty good. And I did ask the KV-1 to go into town because I assumed their KV-1s would go into town. But uh, it was a bit of an odd game. Hey, look, it's a stock M4. I always like how the stock M4s look. I really like the stock turret. Looks so cute. Anyway. I decide to post up on the middle road and I'm going to be shooting into this general vicinity on Lakeville and if anything decides to blitz down the middle I'll be able to pump it full of something but uh, we end up getting a KV-1 driving down the middle road which is about the stupidest place for a KV-1 to go although he does actually do a little, little bit of damage their other KV-1 that uh, ends up going into the the valley ends up doing a better job. They also have a B1, but he gets taken out. So I'm not getting much spotting going on. Um, no one's really spotting for me. The M4 probably doesn't have view range to really see everything that's going to be in the back over there. And I can't see that M7. There's a building between me and him. Even moving up, I still can't see into there. And the M4, I don't know why he sat there. He just got obliterated by the Kudu Bun. Actually, no, the M7 shot him. Interesting. <laughs> I always thought it was the KV-1 that killed him. So now that I haven't really have much support, I've got to be careful if that KV-1 decides to come around the corner. Their KV-1 is in the city. And for some reason, our KV-1 decided to drive all the way over here, and he's just getting side-shotted to living hell by all their tanks that are hiding up over into here. So, if you're a heavy tank driver, don't drive your heavy tank down this side of Lakeville, unless you just feel like dying. Always take it through the back, through the high road, and then you won't get shot at. So, with the SC-85, obviously, you do have to be somewhat patient. And we end up spotting the Panzer IV H. And I hold my shot because I want to make sure this, this one counts. And I end up hitting him. And the M4, I think I tracked him. Or he just sat there and took it because I hit him for a couple shots as well. You can see that these are going on pretty much exactly where I aimed them. Except that one kind of whiffed a little bit to the left or the right. So I switched targets over to the M7. And I'm pretty sure that one went in. This one did go in on the VK. Because next time I see him, he's down about 280 hit points. So some pretty good effective fire into the tanks that are in the back. Definitely not spotting them myself. But I'm giving some good cover fire to my guys in the city and these guys pop up again get a good shot off on that dude say goodbye to the Panzer 4H both gave me their sides and you can see he's down hit points I shot him with before 
he's not going to survive this. Blind shot him, take him down. So that just leaves um, potentially the M7, and there is a Wolverine up there that pops up in a bit. So I'm up to three kills, and I've done a fairly hefty amount of damage so far for a tank with only 350 hit points itself. And I just wanted to see right here if the uh, the KV-1 was still in that spot. He ended up uh, shooting and killing our BDR from the position he's in. So I move up. Just to see if he's still parked around the corner. So I put one into him. And he gets a fairly lucky snapshot into my tank. Again, <laughs> getting hit in the, the upper part of my tank there. So I just get into cover behind this M4. And if this guy's going to come for me, he's going to come for me. But he ended up being too afraid to come around the corner. The game was really, really close all the way through. And now we're actually down a tank. And it's at this point where I don't want that KV-1 to rush me. So I decide that I'm going to head back. And I'm going to try and go and clear out everything that is in the valley. Because it looked like it was a bit of a stalemate uh, up in the top of the map. So I tell my team I'm going to go help the valley. because I wasn't too sure whether that Hetzer and the Wolverine were going to be able to hold that back. Because if I can secure the valley, then I can just worry about the stuff that's going to come in through the middle. And I got a fully aimed shot on the T1. Take him out. Unfortunately, he managed to knock out a Wolverine. So that looks like the valley has been taken care of. We do have a Hetzer over there who's at full health. He managed to piss off someone at some point and they were yelling at him in the chat. <laughs> and what I'm trying to do now is keep that KV-1 out of my render circle as far as spotting range goes because I've got camo on my tank as far as the uh, my crew members go. So I'm hoping that if I can stay out of here and then put my binos up, I'll be able to spot him. So I stop and I aim in on where I knew he was last positioned and he's going to have bad camo and poop, he shows up and I bounce on the side of his turret. <laughs> but I don't bounce again. So we're up to five kills and take out the KV-1. And that's, a, that's the reason why you want the binos, because sometimes you have to spot for yourself, and I, I had to stop there and take out that KV-1. And I just wanted that M7 to stay alive at this point. But what I wasn't able to do was get through the middle road to try and support the M7, because I ended up killing the KV-1 right beside the M4 and there wasn't a lot of room for me to get by. I did try to get by right here a couple times after I wait to see if I can spot the Wolverine, but he doesn't show up. So I try and get by, but it's just, it was fairly futile. The other, the artillery does eventually get by, but his tank was a fair bit narrower and I didn't feel like getting killed by the Wolverine because I was trying to grind up the, the side of those two tanks. So I decide that I'm going to go through the city and use the maneuverability of the tank and the speed to my advantage. So you can see I'm doing right around 50 on open ground on soft terrain. It's one of the things I really, really like about this tank. 
Now, if I was in an AT2, I wouldn't really have much choice other than to try and meander my way through there or go up through here, just because it would take so long to take this long way around. So the artillery did make it around through there, and I really wish he would have stopped <laughs> right around here so I could have at least tried to spot for him. I'm just trying to get through the city as fast as I can because I do not think I'm going to run into the Wolverine in the city and get countercapped by him. And somehow our, <laughs> our artillery managed to spot their artillery because he was just sitting out in the open. So I know where the Wolverine is now and he only has one shot in him so I've switched over to APCR because I want to secure this game and I have a shot at him and I probably would have killed him there but our artillery took him out he uh, managed to TD mode him and smash him in the face so they ended up killing each other and now it was just me against the M7 and the priest probably could shotgun me if he got up close enough or if he was hiding in a bush and managed to just get the drop on me so I've got to be careful I don't have six cents I don't know if I'm spotted so I've got to be fairly careful I know where he was last spotted which was somewhere around here so I thought he dropped back maybe into the valley or uh, into this area here because I don't think the, the priest is actually that fast so we'll just speed this up and I'm driving around the back. Don't see him. Still don't see him. Don't really get where he could have gone. Because I don't think he would have driven into the valley because it was, it, he would have been so bogged down by the marsh stuff. The, the ground resistance in there is really bad. And I was just trying to be careful because he could have parked up in that bush or there's a bunch of bushes over there. And I don't even, would even know if I would be getting spotted. So I decide I'm going to park myself in the cap and I'll let him come to me and then he just appears, he misses his shot, I take him out and that ended up being a first class mastery badge, uh, about 2,050 damage, it was high caliber, it was a top gun and it was also a tank sniper because most of my shots were from well over 300 meters and that's kind of the, the prerequisite for that medal. Um, I don't know if there's too much more to say about this tank. I really, really like it. It, uh, As far as tank destroyers go, it's pretty damn good. Its view range is bad. Um, its armor doesn't really work very well, even though it's sloped. Um, it's basically T-34 armor, and that doesn't really, really work very well either. So um, don't count on the armor unless you get shot in the gun matlet. But other than that, both the guns are fantastic. I love love both the guns. Um, the gun sweep is good. The gun depression and elevation angles aren't too bad either. They're not great, but they're not as bad as on the previous tank. Your top speed is good. Your traverse is good. You move around the battlefield like I did in this one. Like I drove pretty far, <laughs> um, managed to win the game with like only two minutes left. So all in all, there's not too much bad to say about the SU-85. It's one of the better tank destroyers in the game it shoots fast the gun is accurate uh, well they're not both accurate but the, the top gun is accurate it does good damage it has good penetration it has really good penetration with the APCR um, it's competitive in tier 6 and tier 7 games uh, with tanks you'll be shooting at there so all in all I think the SU-85 is a, a great tank destroyer and I recommend it wholeheartedly um, I'm just about done unlocking the SU-100, so I will probably end up keeping this one as well, um, and I'll end up dumping the crew from this into that, and I'll train up another crew with my SU-85i and dump them in this, because I don't have any other tank destroyers at tier 5, and it would be nice to have one that I can use other than just my regular SU-85i, uh, which is my new premium uh, TD that I have. So, yep, SU-85i, great tank, fully recommend. And I'm looking forward to the SU-100.
So that's going to conclude this review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.